While I always love to do Lightroom and Photoshop tips and tricks videos and, and show people hopefully things that maybe they hadn't seen before, um, I also love to just do just do edits of photos, start to finish. I call it a photo makeover, where I take a photo, raw photo from scratch, no edits to it, and I show you what I would do to it. Uh, this photo is from a photo shoot from probably almost a decade ago. I was looking through some old photos. I realized I hadn't done a lot with it. Thought it'd make a great idea for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and jump in. First things first is uh, I would go ahead, you know, I, I don't necessarily have a, a planned workflow for cropping. Sometimes I do it first, sometimes I do it last. It really just depends. When, when the cropping bugs me, then I tend to do it first. So this needs some cropping and straightening. Let's head up here to the crop tool. Uh, keyboard shortcut for that is always R, so that's a good one inside of Lightroom to get used to. If you use Camera Raw, remember it's C. So sometimes I, I get confused between the two. Um, and actually, before I would do that, because this was taken with a wide angle lens, so you'll see a little bit of distortion. And sometimes when I crop and straighten it first, I still have to go back and fix it. So a good idea would be go down to your lens corrections tab, or I believe it's the optics tab inside of Camera Raw. Go down there and enable profile corrections. And that should detect the lens and fix any distortion that you have. It's always a good idea, especially with a, a contrasty background like this to remove chromatic aberrations. Um, that can help as well. Then we can go over, use the crop tool. I'm just gonna grab the straightening section of the crop tool and just gonna drag it along the horizon line here. So just click and drag it along. I don't even have to drag it all the way across the photo. Just find a good section of it that's straight and that looks good. So that'll take care of a little bit of straightening. And then I would also come over here and probably do a little bit of cropping on it as well. Now from there, we'll head up here to the basic panel. And the interesting part I, I think about editing photos like this is it, it's tough to do it globally when you have such a wide dynamic range, meaning we've got really, really bright parts and we've got really, really dark parts. I, I think you're, you're pigeonholed a bit when you go just to the regular toning section in that basic panel. So on a photo like this, I might actually jump straight over to the masking panel so I can start to separate the adjustments. It doesn't mean I do it for every photo. If there's not as, as wide of a dynamic range there, sometimes I can get away with just using the basic panel. But for this, I think the first thing we need to do is, uh, is attack the sky. I could do select sky. The problem with select sky is when I pull back on that exposure, you get this weird line. And I'm actually gonna throw up, I'll, I'll make sure I put, there'll be a little card that pops up in the corner of this video. I'll, I'll try to put a link into the, the description of it too, where I did a video comparing the different select sky methods that we can use, but you can see that, you can see that line that we start to get there. So it'll look a little bit odd if you do that. And so this is one of those photos where I would go a different route and I would go into create a mask. I would do the linear gradient. Um, we'll bring the highlights down, we'll bring the exposure down a little bit, and then just drag down. And just make sure your line, your center line for that, just make sure it goes below the horizon. Because what I'm trying to do is avoid that line that we get that we can see there sometimes when we make a sky a little bit darker. So just make sure that middle line goes below the horizon there. Okay, it doesn't too it doesn't matter too much uh, how you know how how feathered you make this or how strict you make it because I think we're going to want to do the effect to the in entire sky. So now what we can do here is I would pull back on highlights. Really, I pull back on highlights more than I would anything. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily darken it like that because I think it starts to look uh, a bit artificial. We can darken it a little bit, but something along those lines. So you can see that's our before, that's our after when it comes to what we did to the sky. And then the problem is, is of course we're making everything. That's where select sky would come in handy because it's, it, would, it would outline everything that we have here in the foreground and do a better selection. So we're making everything in this foreground here dark. So what we can do is go to subtract, go down here to subtract with the object selection tool. And I'm using the brush portion because you've got a little bit of a lasso portion too. So I'm using the brush portion of the object selection, right and left bracket keys to work with your uh, sizing of the brush. And what I'll do here is just paint over this and it should remove that from the selection. Um, I'll subtract again with the object brush and paint over this. 
and it should remove that from it. Those areas aren't too bad, it's really over here, so I'll subtract one more time with object and paint over this area right over here. So what that's doing is each time it's subtracting that from the main mask and it's using the object selection tool, which this is a very clearly defined object. So it, it'll generally work out really well for you. It's a very, very underutilized tool. One of my favorite tools when it comes to the masking tool that we have here. And I don't think it gets talked to or used enough. You know what else doesn't get talked about enough? My no light, no problem courses. <laughs> that for a segue, just a quick word from our sponsor. I promise I'll keep it really fast here. Um, so if you like what you see here, I actually have a course called No Light, No Problem, where it's very, very creative, very short and to the point course. Um, it's on sale right now. So, so they're always a, a very good price point as well. But the idea behind those courses is it's not necessarily a no light, like the, the photo's dark. It's just the photo where the light isn't what you hoped for. And I use techniques like what you've seen here to add some depth and dimension and some other ones that you'll learn throughout the, the different volumes in there. So uh, it's a very creative course. As I mentioned, there's three volumes. You can just buy one. You can see all three on the website so you can see which one might resonate with you a little bit more. And the other thing that's pretty cool about it is I use other people's photos. I don't just use mine because I tend to shoot and have the same issues. So you'll get a wide range of photography, wide range of editing options. And you see just plain start to finish how I would edit a photo, the different techniques. So very easy to watch, very short to watch, very affordable course. I hope you'll swing by and find out a little bit more. Let's jump back in. Okay. So from there, now we've got a separate one, a separate mask for our sky. You can always double click the name of it and just type in sky there. Um, another problem you're gonna have when you're shooting toward the sun. Now the sun is down, but we still have a lot of glow happening over here. And I like that glow. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get rid of that glow because I think it, it makes the photo a little bit more dynamic. However, to me, this highly gradiated sky that we get between that glow and then the dark area over here, to me, it's a little bit distracting. When I look at it, I never like that. So what I'm gonna do here is create another new mask. I'm gonna go down here to the linear gradient and I'm gonna increase the exposure just a little bit. And I'm just gonna skim a gradient from the top left corner because that's where all that darkness was, all right? It doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's, it's plenty good enough um, in what we're doing here because all we're trying to do is just take away some of that darkness there. So we obviously wouldn't want to make it brighter than, than what was over there. So again, that's zero. And then just start to inch it up a little bit. It's okay that it's a little bit darker. I don't necessarily want to match the sky going all the way across. But to me, that, that, that deep gradation we had between the bright and the dark was just too much. Okay. And, and honestly, you're not seeing the effects of what we did with this gradient negatively anywhere. Of course, you've got all of your add and subtract tools where you could go do something similar if you were, but it's such a it's such a, a tiny adjustment that it's not really worth going in and refining any more than that. All right, so that takes care. I think our sky's looking pretty good. Let's go over here, create another new mask here, and we'll start to work a little bit on some of these foreground rocks. So again, I'm gonna just take my object selection tool, hit the right bracket key, make that a little bit bigger. Gonna paint over some of the rocks here. And I'm not even gonna go to the, I like the ones on the horizon line. Everything, everything above this little rocky area here is good. It's just this area to me that's a little bit too dark. So I'm just gonna paint over that. It's not gonna be a perfect selection, but we'll increase the shadows a little bit. We'll go down to the color tab and make sure you don't go down below. Your masking adjustments look different than your basic and your global adjustments down here. There's a big distinction between these. So if you go below that to basic tone curve color mixer, then you're adjusting the whole photo. So I get that question a lot. So I'll go over here to color. I'll add a little bit of warmth to those rocks. And then I'll also go down to effects and add a little bit of texture to them as well. So it gives them a little bit more detail. Maybe even some, eh, I'm not crazy about the clarity, but definitely a little bit of texture just gives them the appearance of a little bit of detail there. So again, we don't wanna make them super crazy bright. We just wanna make, give a little bit more detail there, let people see into that. If there starts to be a line because the selection isn't perfect, then you just go to subtract and then go down over here to your brush tool and use a very, very, you can use a large 100% feather brush. 
All right. And then what we're doing here is we're just painting around these edges. And you know, light falls, light wraps around things. So I think rather than having a perfectly selected object, I think this actually makes things look a little bit more realistic there. So you can just paint around some of those edges and take away that hard edge that might have existed from that object selection that we did before. Okay, so we can uh, double click that one and just call it rocks, click OK. If you want to turn that one off and then back on, you can see what it looks like. So that one definitely helps. Another one I would do in here would just be go to create new mask. Again, I would go to my object selection for this one. And I want to work on that foreground a little bit, just that sandy area that's right up front. So we'll just paint in there. Again, a little bit of shadows, brighten it up a little bit, and then I actually bring back the blacks. What that does is that adds a little bit of contrast. We still, we still brighten it, okay? We still brighten it with the shadows if I turn it off and on. It, it's definitely brighter, but it didn't, to me, the, to me adjusting the blacks helps keep it from getting that milky faded type of look that we can see in there. So just bring the blacks back a little bit. So it still keeps it brighter. Sometimes you can even boost those whites a little bit and that can help. So I think that looks good. This is another one. I think if you went to effects, it could benefit from a little bit of texture down there as well. Still again, just makes it look a little bit sharper. There's no need for sharpening on this photo because the whole photo is sharp, but some of this texture can bring out some of these little crevices and uh, things that you have on some rocks and trees and walls and things like that. Next up, let us jump over to create one more new mask and we'll go over into the brush tool here and i'm going to go to the tone section and just add a little bit of exposure and a little bit of whites i'm going to brush in on some of the water up front here just looking a little bit dingy to me so i'm not going to do the whole area just some of the front Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we're using this large feathered brush. So as long as we don't brush into the foreground like that, we can get away with not being perfect inside of here. Okay, There's no need to spend a whole lot of time on something like this. And if you want to, while you have the tool, I mean, sometimes, you know, adding, adding just, a, I'm gonna hit the right bracket key and just kind of skim a quick line across. It adds a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of depth and dimension up there. You can always come over here and control it. You'll bring down the exposure a little bit. Again, all these little things are subtle, all right? There's no rule to it. It's just a very subtle adjustment to make that front area, which is, this is where I want you looking. I don't want you looking back here too much. I want you looking up front here a little bit more than, than what's back here. So I can make that a little bit brighter. And honestly, to me, it still might even be a little bit too bright. So we'll pull that back. As I'm starting to look at it, there's no reason why we can't go back to the rocks again maybe a little bit too bright there. As I'm looking at the difference between the foreground and background, it was just too much. So I can you know, just bring the shadows back a little bit on that to make it a little bit darker as well. Okay, so I think we've done all of our all of our masking adjustments, most of our global adjustments. I think I think everything looks good here. We can bring it in for a landing. Let's close up our masking panel. Uh, you can you can add color to this in a number of different ways. We could go to the basic panel and just overall just warm the whole photo up. So that would be one method to it. Again, there's no right or wrong in this. It's whatever you like. So the other thing you could do is go to color grading and I would go to the midtones here and I would drag this little outer circle and don't forget there's different ways that you can see the color grading panel. So if yours doesn't look like mine, click on some of the different options there. But I would drag this outer circle to the RNG red area here and then drag the middle. But this way, this time, hold down the shift key. This is the saturation of the color that we're about to add. So this is just adding a little bit of color into the midtones here, okay? Which is gonna grab some of the highlights. It's gonna grab some of the shadows as well. But I don't want a lot, just want a little bit, okay? Again, should be a very subtle adjustment. You can turn it off, you can turn it on. I can see it. It's probably hard for you guys to see it just because it happens so subtly. So just to show you what overdone would look like, but pull that back there. Again, a great way to add color into the photo. Um, you can in, in control the shadows and highlights too and just infuse a little bit of color into those if, if you wanted to the, for the photo, but there is no right answer for it. It's just 
that's another way to do it. I, I use both, it really depends on my mood. Today I'm in the mood to use color grading. Tomorrow I might be in the mood to come and do it with that temperature slider as well. I do both, okay? So if you want to see, oh, one more thing I think we can do is go to the effects panel and just add a tiny little bit of a vignette. It doesn't have to be a lot. Drag the amount to the left, drag the midpoint all the way to the left, drag the feather all the way to the right. That really smooths out the gradient here. And all we're trying to do is just focus the attention away from the edges in toward the, the hook or the center that we can see here of the photo. Again, subtle little adjustments, but you add them all up together and they do start to make a difference here. If you wanna see the full before and after, you can hit the backslash key. That shows you before, after, before and after. And then I'll leave you with one last little thing that we can do, which is to jump over to Photoshop. So you can go photo, edit in, and then you can edit over into Photoshop. And once I'm there, the sky, the sky's pretty normal, it's pretty bland. So if you wanted, you could do a sky replacement pretty easily on this one. Just go edit, sky replacement. And there's any one of a number of ways that you can go with it. So if you look at some of the default skies that come with Adobe, I'd go to spectacular. Picking the right sky is gonna be the key here, all right? You can't pick a sky that looks like this. It's just never gonna look realistic, all right? So you've gotta pick a sunset sky. Um, you know, the stormy one looks good. It's a little bit weird because there's some light rays coming in here and this is already the sunset, but you could probably get away with something like that. And then if you've got your own skies, if you go out and you take you know, your own skies, or I also do have a sky pack on my website that you're always welcome to go check out. Um, one of the ones in there is the sunrise sunset. And so I can just go click on a sky. So that's another option is to go that route, do a little bit of a sky replacement. The one thing I would caution you is, especially on a photo like this, it's gonna to be tough to pull off to just do a basic sky replacement. You're, you're gonna probably have to go in here and modify it. One of the things I would do is make sure you output to new layers down here at the bottom, click okay. And then what that'll do is that will create a sky replacement group for you. I would turn off a lot of the layers. I would turn off the edge lighting group. I'd even consider turning off the foreground lighting group inside of there. But the big thing that you're gonna have to do is go to the sky itself and reduce the opacity. And because we have a, a pretty much a blank sky to begin with, you'll be really successful with it. If you had another sky in there, it'd be a little, it'd definitely be harder to get away with something like that. So because we had a blank sky in there, we can reduce that opacity a little bit, make it look, you know, help it blend in to that background a little bit. So just another, just trying to throw out different ideas for you. I don't know that I would do a sky replacement in this one. I think, I think it's still, looks fine, but it is, it is a blank empty sky. So there's definitely, definitely some things that you can do there if you wanted to spice it up a little bit. And just don't forget when you're done, hit file save, and that'll bring you back over to Lightroom with a copy of the photo that you were working on. Uh, another great video, if you wanna go to see one next, similar to what we were working on here, it's on relighting a scene, taking a very flat scene and adding a little bit of light to it. Uh, uses a lot of techniques similar to what we used here, a lot of those masking tools, which I think are really useful. So if you're looking for something to go watch next, that's a great place to go.